America's enslaved, but Israel and America are kind of tied at the hip as mystery Babylon, if you will, or Babylon. So that naturally the people would be in captivity. And how are they put in captivity? Through a constant threat of war. In the Middle East, there are people prophesying that all of Israel's enemies are being decimated so that Israel can go on. I can't pray for Israel. The current state of Israel with the big obelisk outside the Knesset, I'm not praying for that. Are you? Hell no. Um, no, I don't know. It brings into question the whole Israel founding. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just All I can say about it is this. Um, a Jew is Abraham being obedient to God, counted to him for righteousness, and the children of Abraham, meaning you believe God is counted to you for righteousness, that's a Jew. So, therefore, how many Jews are Jews? Okay, I rest my case. There's no other way to look at it. Yeah, I don't want to get all caught up in this whole evangelical nightmare of uh, blind obedience to mind control handler, uh, you know, Adolf Hitler's, you know, um, people that just want a body of people to control, to give them power and wealth. I, um, I tend to resist that. I tend to not like that. But I am pro-Israel um, of God, of course. I'm pro-Jew of God, of course, because the definition of a Jew is of God. There's no such thing as an ethnic Jew. Um, a... Uh, it's not an ethnicity, it's a belief in God. So I'm pro-Jew. So there you go. Okay? So it's really very simple. I'm not pro-Judaism, and I'm not pro-Christianity. Because both are corrupt. Period. Along with every other religion on earth. I'm pro-Yahweh, the Lord God. Pro-Yeshua, Jesus, his son, because both are one. You have one, you have the other. You can't have one without the other. That's the whole point of the Bible. You've got one, you've got the other, but you have to add yourself into the equation. John 17, you, the Son, the Father, one in one. So you have to actually say, you, the Son, the Father, are one. One thing. So it means the Father is in you, the Son is in you, the kingdom is in you. That's what that means. Hence, no need of religion, end of story. You all know that. There's no returning to the church. There will be no returning to the church later on when it reforms. There's no reform necessary. The church is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You are the church. It's in you. The building they say Jesus on, or Jew on, or whatever, is irrelevant. But all the more reason to push further into God than you can ever do with church. Hence, we have things that help us. Nature, the Bible. Of course, the Bible is useless in the hands of, uh, of someone who's mind-controlled. Useless in the hands of a, of a politico. Useless in the hands of these evangelicals that bow down to Jesus rejecting Jews is somehow superior. You know what I mean? That, that this whole Acts 15 replay, ad nauseum, disgusting, vomit. So evangelicals, the even vomitable. <laughs> even vom vomitable. Now, oh, there you go. <laughs> Evomit. Evangelical, evil angel. Um, Hey, Chuck Smith died, and uh, one wonders if he was uh, ever really knew the Lord. I, I actually doubt, I cannot prove, but I have serious doubts that he even knew who, who God is. Having read his book, Grace Changes Everything, having been to his churches, having seen the way he's trained pastors, I, I don't think so. They were, all, they were all involved in satanic ritual abuse, so what do you want from me? and spying on people, controlling people, and even extorting money out of them. So I don't think he was really a child of God. I think it was just one big 
handler, uh, you know, handling these uh, hippies and reeling them in for Jesus, making them pastors and official Nazis in his Nazi church, uh, and people that fall for his church and others like it, they're just dupes. They're hapless dupes at best. At best. That's the truth. You may not like it, but that's the truth. It's also the truth of uh, Rick Warren, another Nazi outfit, and, and the rest of them. All they want to do is get all involved in your business and your life, your home, your wife, your this, your that, spy on you, control you, control your kids, and siphon the slave, chattel, energy, money, and, and power, etc., from you and your dedication to them being under their control, under their thumb. In other words, they got your balls. They cut them off. God? No. You see God by being obedient to them, then they show you God. Never seen any exception to that and never will. That's the truth. If you can't handle it, don't need to listen to me, do you? Well, Zeph, I'm glad you're finally seeing the Jew. No, I have Jewish blood in me and, you know, I say Jewish blood. It's like, but it's, I had to work through this idea of Jewish blood versus faith. You know, faith in God is a Jew, you know. So it's basically kind of a noun. It's not a thing to belong to. And, um, you know, the idea of a chosen people, it's, yeah, the, a chosen Abraham and his people who choose the Lord. And then later on, when they are shown to be disobedient or, or rebel, you either kill them or the nation goes down. Your choice. Moses chose to have them killed so that they could keep going. Uh, but anyway, I'm not here to Judaize. I don't need the Bible or the Ten Commandments or any of it to know the Ten Commandments or any of it. It's all evident to everybody. It's in our DNA. The Word of God is in the DNA. It's in the self. So we know what's right and wrong. All over the globe we know. Whether there's been a Christian missionary or not. I think God has used Christians on occasion. But in general what I've seen is America is a good result of Christian faith. What you're seeing right now is a result of the mind control Christian churches. This is their fault because they were charged with the responsibility of a nation, a Christian nation it was supposed to be originally, and then it was a nation for free of religious persecution. I understand that. But the Judeo-Christian faith, ethic, morals, etc., went out the window and it was the, so the stewardship of these churches, and I would say anybody else, and synagogues and to, to a lesser extent, but I mean the churches abrogated, I mean the, what you see in America is a direct reflection of the, inner, of the inner life, of the inner condition, the spiritual condition of the, what you might call the church is exemplified in the outer situation we find in America. I, there's no one else to blame in that way. They're a big part of what has happened here. So being a member of this, like the conservatives are exempt? No, the conservatives, the conservative Christians, are, who are part of the system, are responsible because God hates the ones who try to appear as godly more. That, that's the lukewarm church. The Lord said he wants you to be hot or cold, but not lukewarm. So what you see here is lukewarm. In other words, people who are going along to get along. And he hates that the worst. So that goes into judgment faster than anything else. That's the worst thing, to be, have a likeness of the Spirit of God and, then, and really be using it to deceive other people, which is what they do. While they're extorting money out of you and blackmailing you to stay there. Yeah. Yeah, so they're criminals. Absolutely. If Jesus showed up today, it would probably be the evangelical church in Chuck Smith's outfit that would kill him. Absolutely. I have no doubt about that. 
And yet society is lauding these people as, you know, they're the good force, but it's, a, it's an evil force that got loose. No, it's, it's a collective force. And the churches are as responsible as everybody else. They, um, they are all failures. Every last one of them, that's 501c3, is a complete abject failure in this life. And I will never get off the truth because when I see the result of all this faith manifest, manifested in a totalitarian state, I know if, that we've gone into captivity and the failure is in the spiritual life of America. So who is responsible for that? Look, you know, look to who's responsible and that's where you have to set your... So but in that regard, I would say the church is Ill, irrelevant then because they didn't stem the tide. So they failed in their, their least of duties. In the least of duties. Nothing but false prophets, false teachings, money grubbing, self-aggrandizement, egotism, vanity, evil, power mongering, Satanism, perversion, all institutionalized because of these, lo these lovely people. And I would advocate, no, I don't want any part of them. And no, I don't advocate that anyone ever, I used to give people a pass if they had to go to church. Now I'm kind of like, look, you know, if you haven't figured this out by now, there's something wrong with you. Something really wrong with you. Can't you give them a break? Well, while I'm sitting in my little cell, can I give them a break? Sure. I'm just not going to say that they have no responsibility in what's happened. Obviously, something went wrong somewhere. Um... The, the best people that I've met are people that follow the Lord. You know, people who follow the Lord and are making no fanfare about it. And they're not telling other people they're going to hell if they don't do it the way they're doing it. And um, that will never change. That will never change. You know, that will never change. Um, it's, it's amazing to me how, uh, I would just say this, things that are contributory, things that are good, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that help the society, things that help bring employment, that help put food on the table, that help expand people's opportunities that are good and right, those things and people that contribute to that, they're the godly ones. I don't care if they call themselves atheists. They, they may just not know what force is animating them. But people that create good in society is the benefit of other people. And I don't care whether it's... No, I can't say the music industry. I say that's another, another filth, filth pillar of... of uh, well, filth to me is, is stupidity. It's not, it's not like necessarily perversion or, or pornography even. It's stupidity is filth especially wanton intentional stupidity based on wanton intentional ignorance to follow the bouncing ball to get the goodies, uh, which is also called the way of death. And I don't even need people to understand this anymore. I don't need people to follow me. I don't need people to understand what I'm saying. I'm just going to let it go from the spirit. The Lord hates the church system in America. Obviously from the result of going into captivity, Period. I'm glad we could at least agree on that. I'm glad we can agree on the actual result. No, I'm not spitting on Chuck Smith's grave. I'm just wondering whether, since he was such a power monger and such a, such a, a shady businessman, if he was really belonging to the Lord or if he atoned or repented before, if he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ before his death. There's a lot of people that baptize people who don't believe. That's one of the great ironies. But it's, you know, your fault because, you know, it's our fault, okay? Because we accept someone that says church and puts up a, uh, uh, puts up a shingle. We go, oh, that's real. We abide the world of appearances rather than the world of what is. The world of appearances here is an illusion and a joke. 
So if you say, if you, when you say God, I see Satan. When I see a symbol of a cross on a building with a steeple, I see Satan. I don't see, it's like, you prove it to me otherwise. Show me that building where there's no satanic ritual abuse, mind control, and that whole matrix weird stuff. Show me where there's no slavery, where there's a steeple on the roof. Show me. Never seen one yet where there weren't a bunch of hapless slaves sitting there in their own totalitarian regime called